All right, we are recording. Um, welcome back or welcome to Sandcast Beach Volleyball with Triborn and Travis Maward brought to you as always by our guys at Wilson Volleyball. And I uh, want to give a huge welcome back to the show, Savvy Simo, our favorite UCLA Bruin who uh, just finished up an awesome college career uh, over at UCLA. And, and now you are into the, uh, the big bad world of professional beach volleyball. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. And I'm excited to be back. It was crazy. And I, all I wanted to do was get in an in-person podcast with you guys. I couldn't cause of my bubble. And now I'm still non-person. <laughs> yeah. I went home and I'm MIA for a little bit, but thanks for having me on. It's obviously always an honor and just excited to get to chat with you guys about my experience and about my career and hope my future career, hopefully. Yeah. It's crazy how fast that all went down. I feel like just so recently it was like you just decided to come back and play this last year and now yeah it's over. yeah it, it's Where the heck did that go it happened so fast i just feel like this whole covid year went by so fast every my mom this is just just super random but i my mom made me start paying for my own car insurance during quarantine and it was like a big set for me i'm an adult whatever so i went and i did it all and she came up to me today and she was like, hey, you need to renew your insurance, whatever. I was like, that's already been a year. How has it been a year since all of this happened? It's just time flies. And you know, back in when I, my whole season got canceled, I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done with college. and um, I'm not going to play anymore. And I decided to come back and I, I just made sure I went back with, you know, hundred percent of me. And I, I fully dedicated myself to that team and, um, I'm so grateful that I came back because of, you know, not only the, how we finished, but just the experience I had with that group of girls. And, um, I feel like I learned a lot more about myself and fell in love with being a Bruin even more than I already had. And I just gained a greater appreciation, um, for that school and, and all those people that I had been with for my whole time there. Yeah. I feel like you, um, we were talking about kind of like the pros and cons of going back to school and like what you might be missing on the pro level. And yeah. I mean, there, there's still no AVP, like exactly. you're actually timing it perfectly. Exactly. Uh, and we've only played in like, how many have I played in? Three FIVBs, which is one trip. Mm -hmm. um, so like in terms of that, your timing has been great. It seems like from my perspective that it was a, definitely the right decision to, to make. 100%, 100%. And obviously going back and getting coached by Sign and Jenny, it's a no brainer. You have to, they're so incredible. And um, I was in a different position this year, just as a senior trying to um, be a leader of a young team. And it, it's tough. And the hardest thing for me and for the team was following the COVID protocol. I mean, the amount of conversations I'd have with girls or with the coaches or with team, you know, with the team about following the protocol and not seeing outside people I mean telling anyone that you can't do this this or this is is crazy and then to tell people you can't go see other people is it's it's crazy and we actually we lost players and we had players out for the whole COVID protocol thing and that was definitely the hardest part and the part that I struggled with the most and that was the most draining as a leader was just like making sure no one got COVID, making sure I didn't get COVID, making sure people weren't breaking the rules. And in a normal season, I wouldn't have to be monitoring my teammates and saying, you can't go out. You can't do this. You can't do that. It's do whatever you want. And if you're not performing, you're not going to play. But it was a whole nother level for not me, but everyone else to follow these, these guidelines to, you know, better our chances of making it to the finals, which we did. We did a great job of, we didn't get COVID in season. Um, a bunch of people got vaccinated, but I think, yeah, that's the most draining part is the fact that we had to do all that extra stuff on top of a normal season. Cause it, it was so tiring and this season itself is tiring. So yeah, it was a lot, it was a lot. Well, I think, I think it probably speaks to your level of leadership that, I mean, you were the, one of the, the lone, like I'll call you a true senior cause Jackie Quaid is a senior, but she came in yeah. late. So you're like the the lone like true senior as I'll describe it of I think what was the youngest team at the national championships leading the youngest team in a really strange COVID year uh, you guys win Pac-12 championships beat USC which I think is 
maybe one of the most talented teams in college beach history. If you look yeah. at like, their fives three years ago, the Norse Twins would be a ones on basically any court in, any right. school in the country. Yeah. And you guys come up uh, runner ups in the national finals. So I think uh, from my perspective, uh, you did a hell of a job, Sav, <laughs> at UCLA. Thank you. And I, I, I couldn't have done it without everyone on board. I mean, it wasn't just me and, you know, we, there were five seniors, but they're going, you know, Jacqueline's going, like she, I think she wants to go play um, overseas and the other ones are going to grad school. So it is, you, you mentioned like, I, I'm kind of the last man standing and that's how it was for indoor too. I came in with five girls and I was the only one left that had been there for all four years. Um, and so I couldn't have done any, for all of my teams, I, I couldn't have played that leadership role without the coach's help and without a great group of girls. I would have gone crazy if it was any different. I mean, you have your ups and downs, but at the end of the day, it was a great group of girls. And I think that's what helped us get so far is having not just talented young girls, but girls that just genuinely love each other and are playing for each other. That's the most important thing. Um, and something that probably put us above other teams. I don't know the ins and outs of other teams, but we just loved each other and we played for each other. Um, but yeah, I think that's another reason why this whole transition and being done is hard for me because I don't have anyone to share my, the memories with. I felt pretty alone my whole fifth year because I wasn't really supposed to be there. I didn't be there. And I, I know all the girls, like obviously, but I didn't, I just felt like, even my senior year, my fourth year of indoor, there's just there besides the coaching staff that was different. The only person that had been there the whole four years was Seely. I was the only like the last man standing. And it's like a really cool thing, but it's also kind of sad because all of, you know, I look back at freshman year and not one person my freshman year was still with me at UCLA my senior year. I, I, I try to tell stories. Me and Stein always try and tell stories of the team about certain players or certain memories. And we're looking at a room of girls who had never, ever been like been a part of that. They weren't there. And you just kind of forget you're being there for, from being there for so long. And I also figured out too, the only player that had ever lost in the national at Gulf Shores was me and Leah Monkhouse. Leah had transferred from Hawaii. Yeah. And so we were the only girls on our team who had ever lost in Gulf Shores. Everyone else had only known winning. So that was another, <laughs> it's another weird fact about our team you know the the fourth year seniors they won we won freshman sophomore year and they didn't we didn't get to play their junior year so going into it I'm like you guys don't know like you don't know how it feels to lose which is kind of scary because it's a horrible feeling um and so it's hard to like get people to you don't want to play to not lose you want to play to win but there's also from experience and from losing in Gulf Shores, a part of you wants to win so bad because you know how it feels to lose and then you know how it feels to win. Yeah. And half of our team, five girls in our starting lineup had never played a match at Gulf Shores. And, there, and then another big chunk of that group had never lost. So I'm like, it's, it's <laughs> try, I'm trying to communicate to them the feeling of losing, the feeling of winning and all these different things. And at the end of the day, I, I kind of had a meltdown on – Thursday before we started I just felt so alone and I'm trying to you know lead a group of girls and I just was like sign a genuine like you just gotta let go like you gotta just let go and people have to experience this tournament for themselves and you've done what you can to try and speak these things into existence and tell the girls what to do or what to think or what to believe all these different things and they're like you have three days left of your college career just let go and enjoy and I finally did because the whole season I was like having all these pep talks and doing all these things. And it was so draining for me. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but um, yeah, it took a long time for me to just to do all the work. And even at the end, I still felt like I needed to do all this work. And the coaches were like, just breathe and play, like, enjoy it, enjoy it. And then the whole weekend, the whole team was just talking about, you know, we were all just preaching gratitude and being thankful for being there. Um, I remember I woke up on Sunday I woke up Sunday morning, championship Sunday. I went for a walk with my dad and I cried for like 30 minutes and just felt so happy to be happy to be there. I think I was just as much as it sucked to lose making it to that Sunday with the squad we had made me. So I was just so content. It was a beautiful day, a beautiful morning. And I finally felt kind of free from all of the stuff we went through 
and it was the last day of my college career. I made it as far as I could have made it. And I just finally took a breath and was just like, I'm just going to smile and, and soak this all in. And I think the team did a really good job of that. Um, it's tough to play a really strong USC team uh, who hadn't gone through the loser bracket and you had, and they came out and played absolutely unbelievable. And we, you know, whether we were tired or just wasn't our day, um, I think our whole team needs to be proud of how we competed. And it's taken me a couple of days to say that and actually believe that, but we did a lot this year and um, I'm just so proud of the girls and the coaching staff. And I just can't wait to watch them, you know, battle as, as the years go on. It's crazy. Yeah, for sure. That's wild. I mean, it kind of bring me back to like, I'm like mixing in my head what I'm going through still in my career, you know, yeah. with when I played indoor because you're on this big team, you know, and, and when you, for me, it's me and my guy, me and Trevor, basically. Yeah. Um, but there's still so many similarities um, and there's so much value uh, in all the, I guess, challenges that you're going through. Yeah. Those are all like the things that you need to face and go through and get through to like keep climbing. Whereas yeah. some people might fade off and just not face it or just whatever happens, happens. You mm -hmm. like went through it, the blood, sweat, tears, all that, and just like faced it all. And it was way harder probably, yeah. but that's like the stuff that's going to be valuable moving forward. For me, we were having a terrible preseason yeah. here. You um, learn, you learn a lot more when you actually invest. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you cut out there. I interrupted you. No, my yeah. internet's terrible, but we, we were having a bad preseason and I was that guy where I'm bringing stuff up, having difficult conversations. I felt like an idiot, but eventually it turned and helped the team. And then I had to release and just trust my team. Just this guy is going to be who he is. He's going to do what he does. He's going to put in, he's dedicated to his own extent, whatever he, he can do. And I got to trust that and, and play my game, you know? Um, and that's what helped the team click. So like pushing them, pushing yourself, but then stepping back and trusting them when it comes down to it and having no expectation for what they do. That's kind of like the balance that I've found is, is really valuable. So like, yeah. that's, don't think of it like uh, college is over and you used, you know, I went through all that. It's all over. Like, this is like just the beginning and like super valuable things that you went through. Yeah. Um, and now you're going to, now you, you do deal with it, but with one person <laughs> instead of the whole team, you know, and your coach, of course, if yeah. you have a coach. And you just learn so much more when you fully invest yourself into something. I feel like I wouldn't have learned so much if I was kind of half in, half out. Yeah. Being all in taught me so much more. And you, I mean, you mentioned like, so you say stuff and you kind of feel dumb or you feel like people aren't listening or they don't care. And at the end of the day, you just have to let go and, and trust that everyone's worked their hardest and hope that the, what you did on and off the court in the weight room, whatever it is, will translate to the other girls. And it is, I've learned so much just, you know, through UCLA that I'll use in sports and just in life. I mean, you learn so much being on a team and, and dealing with all that stuff and dealing with that many, I've been on nine different teams, nine different seasons with nine different rosters and so the amount of people I've met the different coaches and I went through like three strength coaches and a bunch of nutritionists and you know it's a lot to to go back and forth back and forth and to meet all these people but I feel like I'm more well-rounded now because of it I've learned so much more I have more connections and um that's why it's so awesome I can just use all that I have now and, and take it to the real world or to the pro level and um it's just, it's a blessing more than anything. As draining as it is in the moment or when you think it's not working or it doesn't matter, it matters so much. And so that's why I'm just excited to go to the next level and, and use what I've learned from all my coaches and everything and, and see how it goes. Now I got to take the leap of faith and go train. I literally had Zana just text me like, hey, you know, if you, if you need any help, let me know the transition's brutal. I'm like, that's the best text I could have received. Like, are you training? Like, are you training next week? I let me know. Get me in your little, your training group. Um, everyone's been so awesome. Um, so supportive and I'm sure I'll be just fine. The beach community is so loving and caring and from what I've seen and, uh, I've made really good friends and girls like Taryn 
Cloth and Kristen Nuss and a um, bunch of other girls on different teams that are going to the next level. So we're all in the same boat. At least, at least they're playing together. I got to figure out my partner situation, but me and Lexi had a blast. So probably play with Lexi a bit, maybe play with Abby a bit and then kind of see, see where it goes. And as long as like, you guys told me this, you know, get into the training groups and be yep. patient and just work hard and be available. And, you know, I'm talking like I'm, I came up with this. You guys literally told me all this stuff. So all <laughs> credit to you guys. Um, yeah. Just trust the process. Yeah. But I mean, you, you had told us earlier that you went home to just take it all in and decompress and just relax. And I, I think that's a good call. You definitely earn that. And it's, you want perspective, you know, you want to be able to step away from it all. So I guess that would be my advice is trust your instincts on that one of just being at home. Like I'll, I'll call you guys when I'm ready, but like, I'm going to take it all in and appreciate what I've done and what I've gone through and then figure out where I'm at internally and then create the future from there. But I would say definitely uh, listen to yourself and just like relax at home and take it all in first. Yeah, it's it's almost like a grieving process. Like you just all one day, like one game, everything you've done for five years is is taken away from you. And I mean, I love those girls on USC, but losing my match and losing to USC in the last game of my college career is like, oh, <laughs> like, so brutal. But again, I have so much respect for all of those girls and that whole entire coaching staff, they're so great. All of them love them. I texted all of them after the game as sad as I was. I mean, they deserved it. They played amazing and they're all my friends, but yeah, I was telling you guys earlier after we lost, I didn't really have the space to sit and, and sulk a little bit and I go cry in my room alone for a little bit. I didn't really have that. We all hung out together, which is awesome. And then traveled home, but I got my car on Monday and just like kind of lot, I lost it. I was losing it. I was having like, you start thinking about the loss and how upsetting it is. And then you start thinking about how you're done with college, but you have no plan and you start freaking out. And then I was having this like identity crisis of like, what am I going to do? I've only been at UCLA and like, how am I going to move forward? And, you know, you can kind of spiral out of control from there. And, but I, I came home because I, I kind of think I needed that. Like you need to go through that to get over something. And um, when you invest so much time into something and you poured your like I, I wrote in my Instagram literally poured my heart and soul into these programs and when it gets taken away so fast and then you can't have a proper banquet you can't do all these things because it's still COVID and um you got to kind of grieve a little bit and process it and that's why I think the best place to do is with my family I I want to be with my teammates more than anything but I need to be in a little bit of a better headspace to actually enjoy being with them um which I will be and I'm already in a better place now than I was a couple days ago but um yeah I actually listen to my body and my mind and just figured I'd go home for a little bit and uh, connect with my parents and connect with some old friends from high school that I'm still super close with and um, just do something a little bit different. Being in Westwood's a little painful right now for me. It's just, it's weird because I don't have school anymore either. I, uh, we normally, I don't graduate till June, but I finished school early. So I'm pretty much done just right there. Um, and yeah, I, I have nothing but gratitude and I'm coming to more of a point of just being content and happy. Um, I know I'm going to get there. It's just going to take a little bit. Um, but UCLA is just, to me, it's the most incredible place. And I'm so lucky to have been able to be there and to have five years there. I don't know if I'd feel this way if I only did four years there, if this whole COVID thing didn't happen. I mean, everything happens for a reason. And the whole experience and journey I've had and the people I've met is life-changing so um it's just the more I talk about it and think about it the more it's le it's less angry and sad and confusing and more just happy and, and grateful and, and ready for the future I feel like that's like the way things go a lot of times where you're say you you lose something after it's been building up for so long and you'll have that gut negative reaction but as time goes on and you begin to kind of take inventory of like your memories from UCLA, which started because of COVID for a pretty long time ago. Yeah. Um, and I think that those will gradually just begin to outweigh it more and more and more. And you'll begin to look back on it and you're like, what? I lost one match in the farthest possible place we could have gone. Like that's a pretty great career. Yeah. Um, and I think that 
you've done such a good job from what I saw of building such cool relationships, not just with UCLA, which I mean, from the looks of it, all those girls respect you a ton, but also from Kristen, Taryn, Tina, all the USC girls and like pretty much every team around the country from what I saw, they were like savvy, like is such a great sportsman. And I think those relationships are just going to go with you and with you throughout your career. Um, where now you're gonna just gonna have like this beach volleyball family all over the country. Yeah, and you're just like you're just getting started, and it's mm-hmm. gonna be fun to watch your ride. Well, thank you, and that's what I love about it. I mean, I am so competitive, and I hate losing. But I think just I think the beach community more than anything is so special, and it is like a family, and people talk about that all the time. And I just. I don't want to be like an angry player that's I can get there if I need to, but I don't like doing that. I just enjoy the game so much more when it's, when there's so much respect and every team I played this year, it was just mad respect. I didn't lose a game and, and not want to go and like shake hands with the other girls. I know it was COVID and we had to do a lot of fist bumps, but towards the end, none of us, none of us, so we're, just like, we're oh, over COVID. We're, we're, like, you. <laughs> we're over it. We're over it. We're, you know, it's, <laughs> we're sharing, we're spreading love. And, you know, even the girls at TCU, I've never met those girls before, but I think it's just at, at that level. And, you know, you know, especially at the ones too, it's, it's every team is so talented and everyone has big respect for you and regardless of who we played it was just nothing but respect and you know my battles with Kristen and Taryn I mean we went overtime in like every single set we played against each other so it's like and they were they're the sweetest girls and I'm so excited to watch them compete in the future and Tina and Megan and you know every team we played like I just want to hug those girls and those are it's so cool that we all respect each other enough to you know win or lose it's like you know, just respect, respect. And I remember I lost to Taryn and Kristen and it, it tied the, we were up two one and I lost. So it was two, two came down to the fives. And we all looked at each other. We're like, whoever wins this, go win it all. Go like get after it. And it was so meaningful. And after they lost our fives won and LSU lost, I looked at, you know, I just went back to Kristen and she was crying and I started crying. I'm like, you are so inspirational and you're so talented and like your career is so incredible. And it, it just like, why am I crying? I just be her and I'm crying. <laughs> I, I, I want them to, I want LSU to do so well. And that's because we respect that program so much. They are so good from the coaching staff to the girls. They're so nice. And that goes for all these other, other programs. Um, and I think that's just the beauty of the sport and why I love it so much. And you know, if people don't want to talk to me during warmups, that's all cool. That's good. If you want to chat my ear up during warmups, I love it. I'm all about it. Like I, I love messing around and, and I, I think it just, this is, I preach this a bunch at, at Gulf Shores is like if the game is so much more fun when you're, when you're having fun and you're enjoying it, when you take it too seriously, I feel like it takes, you know, some of the fun out of it. And I, I felt that during some of the games, when you're in high pressure situations, you want to win so bad, you stop having fun and you just become like so stressed. And me and Lexi would just look at each other and go, let's have fun. This is so, look where we are. Like during the game, we're like, this is so fun. And I think that's just something you don't really do normally. But when you're at that place and playing with these girls, you kind of, you got to just enjoy it. Like anything that's going to happen is out of our control. As long as we have fun and, and, you know, it all come down to the level of our training and we train super hard and that's all we can do. Um, so yeah, that's a huge thing for me. It's not only my connections I've made with people at UCLA, but all, all these other girls across the country and they will be my friends forever. And I can't wait for this summer for girls to fly out here or for me to go other places and play and um, have these memories and these friendships with girls that like I never would have met if it wasn't for this sport. So it's, yeah. it's, it's truly incredible. I love them all. I, I think it's, it's so awesome. It's such a great sport, it's such, it's such a cool thing. And you're getting started pretty soon. I saw mm-hmm. you and Abby Van Winkle, a landmine, like 50 seed in New Orleans. Coming Hell yeah, up. we're getting after it. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I, I've always had indoor stuff during the summer, so I've never really tried to play in any tournaments. Um, 
it was a big step for me. I was like, my mom sent it to me a while ago that, you know, a couple of the AVP next gold tour, what I, I don't even know. I barely know what it is. And she's like, you need to sign up. And of course, when it comes from my mom, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it when I want to do it. <laughs> and it actually was Timmy Brewster who texts me. He's like, hey, I know you want to go play after, I think this is a really big event with some really good teams. Um, and you can get your name out there. You need to sign up. It's almost full. And I got on and I signed up without a partner. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to just, so I didn't think, I didn't know that was a thing either. You could sign up and figure out your partner situation yeah, later, which is placeholder. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Which is awesome. Um, and yeah. I've played with Lexi and Abby. It, it's like, I think it's finals week at UCLA and obviously I'm done with school and um, I'm stoked to go play with Abby. We've been playing together in a while, but I, hopefully maybe next week we can get a couple of practices under her belt and just, we'll probably go with our dads they they have a bromance they love each other and they'll go party it up out there and we'll go play and I get to see girls like Megan and Delaney and Julia and Haley and Kristen and Taryn and all these girls that we just competed against and they're all up there in the in the rankings the with the points and stuff and me and Abby are like way down here so we'll probably have to face some of those girls early on which is fine but I think that's just the first step for me is is getting out there and um having fun and getting my name out there and going to compete. So got to start somewhere. So, you know, yeah. it goes, I'm super excited. I'm really excited. I was looking at the entry list uh, yesterday because one of my buddies, um, Evan Corey, who lives right next to Coconut Beach where they're having that event. Mm -hmm. He was like, just take a look at this entry list because try. So this AVP Next Gold, they're having to cap it at 80 teams. That's how many teams are signed up. Yeah. And uh, the dead last seed is Liam Monkhouse and Molly McBain. I was like, that is a really good dead last seed. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, I think they signed up last minute too, because I wasn't sure if, I know if you're not a citizen, you don't, you can't play in AVP stuff, but I guess you can play in AVP next stuff. I don't, I guess that's how it works. And I Canadian. Yeah. Leah yeah. and Leah and Molly are both yeah. Canadians. Um, so I think they signed up last minute, but are they in the, are they in it or are they on the reserve, the wait list or whatever? They're in it. They are the uh, the last team in Love it. That. Yeah. So, oh. Like, really? Yeah. It's a pretty average team to be in there. <laughs> are you kidding? Yeah. And that's, that's, the, that's the fun <laughs> of it, though. You have these all of us young newcomers coming in with no points, and um, hopefully we can just go get after it. I mean, it's decent prize money. Like, oh, my gosh. So yeah. not saying, you know – you know i'm gonna win but it's something to compete for and for sure go you know, play all these girls and i like i said i've never i've never done this i've never done this and um like to go get on a plane and fly to a beach tournament that's not through ucla is like the weirdest thing to me but that's <laughs> how much if i want to do this that's like the whole thing you're getting on a plane and you're going somewhere yeah um, so it's a it's a good start and it's in a cool place and um ready to get after it i know it's in less than a month i'm like all right i'll take a couple of days off then i gotta start practicing again because yeah yeah there's a lot of uh freedom in the the pro game like you just choose where you want to go and I, it remind it's reminding me of like i guess the beginning of my career i don't know some people do this their whole careers but the beginning of your career it's like you're just playing in anything and everything and like there's so many fun tournaments around the country and where you're not going really for the money or anything. You're just going to play and experience these different events and play against good players. And um, th that was a good time. But I don't really play in those anymore, probably just because I have a family and whatnot. But um, that's just like a really fun time. I feel like there's no pressure to like be the top player or, I mean, realistically it takes years beach volleyball is a an experienced sport so just to go experience it your first year experience everything and take it all in it's going to be super fun yeah and I, I think that's like a big thing for me right now is is just not allowing myself to stress about like I'm not expecting to like go make a living off of beach volleyball this summer like so I was going to get a place in the South Bay I was actually going to move in with Claire Coppola and Tony Rodriguez from LSU nice they're um, coming out yeah, so oh, awesome. Claire, Claire is getting a job. I don't know exactly what it is, but she needs – so we're going to live in the South Bay, but she decided she needs to live in Santa Monica. It's better for her job and stuff. Totally okay. get it. Like, I'm not going to pay rent in Santa Monica. If I'm going to pay rent, I'm going to do it, like, 
in the heart of South Bay. So I'm close yeah. enough to like ride a bike or ride a moped to practice. I don't want to commute. Like if I'm going to commute, I'm going to do it. Like I'm going to, I'm going to couch hop all summer and that's what I'm going to do. And so it kind of made me think like, okay, when that fell through, I'm like, all right, do I, do I really have the funds to go to pay rent? Like, mm -hmm. eh, no, I can, you know, I'm going to go coach for LA beach with Stein and you know, I can do lessons, which is great. It's just not super consistent. I'm looking for kind of a part-time thing to do too, but um, I'm trying not to, to, you know, go too hard on like getting a place there and like making this my, you know, end all be all, I need to make money. I need to put all this pressure on myself to make money so I can survive. If it's my first summer doing this, I'm not expecting to be like winning AVPs this summer. If I, if I get up there and, and qualify and get in there, um, that's the best possible scenario for me. I have no expectations going into this. I want to do well, of course, but I feel like at my age and with how good everyone is, you can't put that kind of pressure on yourself. Um, so I have a ton of friends in the South Bay. I want to go train up there hundred percent. I want to be up there a lot of the time. Um, I want to travel to all the tournaments and, and do what I can there, but it is, you know, I can't just like pay rent and not have the funds to do it. I'm trying to be super smart about it and continue to save up and save money and, um, so I have my lease in Westwood until June 30th, so I can be up there um, and train up there. And after that, we'll we'll see how it goes. And like I said, I know a ton of people up there that are that have been so you know generous and offering me like, if you ever need a place to crash, like stay here. So if I can do a kind of a week by week plan and get a, several trainings in per week, if I even do two a day, awesome, and do a couple lessons, and I can come home and do some lessons um, and just enjoy it and go travel whether it's fall or camping or something um just enjoy the summer and, and live and not be in a protocol and just have fun it's kind of, <laughs> kind of the goal yeah. great call yeah. yeah i think that's smart because I, I think from i've been in california for almost six years and i think the number one thing that i've seen push players out of the game is going just diving into the deep end too fast with no safety net and then they're two years into it they're like oh well, i'm like 15 grand in credit card debt i should go get a job and never play volleyball again yeah. and so i think you're smart by thinking like all right maybe i shouldn't make this my end all be all you know one main draw isn't going to fund my entire summer so i th i think that's the smart way to go it's almost like you just had six years of a ucla education you got a good head on <laughs> i learned something i learned something so i'm going to continue to learn how to manage money and do all the the big girl things and uh all that stuff but yeah i mean i can't you can't unless you're signing a contract like it's hard to just go you know, if you're going to do it, you kind of got to go all in. Um, if you want to do well and you want it to be your life, you, you do have to go all in, but to a certain degree, like I can't just, like I said, get a place and expect that my volleyball, my finishes at tournaments are going to pay for it. Like, you don't know what you're going to do. I remember Stein was telling me like, I've, you know, I used to ask him like, who was your favorite to play against all these different things. And he kind of jokes, he's like, yeah, I mean, off the court, we were cool, but on the court, it was gnarly because we were all playing to to live like they were playing to to pay the bills and yep. that's great if i can get that good amazing um but i know I've thought about it a lot i know i'm not going to pay the bills in one summer of of playing just right out of right out of college so um it's i think it is like you said try i i i, I timed it pretty perfectly i got pretty lucky and We'll see if an AVP schedule comes out um, and what it'll be like and where and, you know, how many people can go to the qualifiers. I mean, those are all important things for me to know because that's like, that's where I'm at. I have no points. Like, that's just where, where I'm at. Um, but then you got to just go grind in these AVP necks and, again, enjoy it and, and go to new places that I've never, never played in before. Never thought I'd go play in a beach tournament in New Orleans. That's pretty cool, but – that's how it's going to be for hopefully the rest of my life. And then we have stuff like six man coming up, which I'm so excited about. And wait, when is it? I didn't know that. Yeah. They're actually, I mean, I'm, I assume it's the first weekend of August. I think that's when it normally is, but um, Rachel Morris, she kind of runs our team. She's like, six man is on. Like she has the inside scoop. So we're all fired up and you know, it's always, always a fun weekend. And again, it all just is because the beach community is so incredible and, it's like a family and that's why it's so exciting to look forward to it. Everyone's just so 
so cool. Everyone of all ages, everyone's so nice, so helpful and so talented and respectful and everything else. So that's again, why I'm, I'm so excited to do it. And going to just take the next couple of days to relax and then I'll get after it. It's only May. It's only the beginning of May, but get started pretty quick. So. It's, it's so crazy. I was, gosh, I forget who I was talking to about this, but you're going to go into new Orleans with having competed so much. Yeah. And everyone else is going to go into new Orleans without having played a tournament in a year and a half. Exactly. So, so like you guys are primed. Exactly. We're ready to go. And I haven't played with Abby, but at least we've, you know, we played on the biggest stage that we could have ever played on being at the national championships. That's a pretty big stage to play on. And, um, there's a couple really legit college teams going out there to play. So um, it'll be, it'll be some good, good competition for us, for sure. Just kind of see where we stand with everyone else. Um, and yeah, it's, it's so exciting. It's just so different for me. I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's a whole new world playing yeah. beach during the summer. It's a whole new world. Normally it's like indoor grind. And now I get to go have fun. And you just get, you get to stay off the hardwood. You get to stay exactly. off the sand. It's nice. My body is so happy. My body is so <laughs> happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stay in shape and have fun and then sign up for tournaments and, yep. and you're golden. <laughs> and I think, I mean, and having, I think you haven't gone to UCLA is such a good resource because there's so many good alumni. I mean, you can yeah. pick, I know you already mentioned that Zana is talking to you and saying, Hey, like we could use you in training groups and you could pick her brain about transitioning to professional life and sponsor. I mean, you played with her and the McNamara's and they're all, all three of them are doing it so different. Um, so you have so many resources that you can see, well, Hey, like, what'd you do? What'd you do? And I think like everyone's going to be super helpful. And Stein, I mean, he was a road dog. He lived in a garage for like a year. <laughs> yeah. Boat, right. Wasn't he on the boat? I don't know if it was a boat. I remember when we were both working at 1440, you mentioned that he lived in a garage, which is hilarious. <laughs> He's such a legend. He's such a legend. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Um, well, when are you, so you're good through your lease in, uh, till the end of June? Yeah, June 30th, I have my lease in Westwood, and then I might just become a professional couch hopper and just figure it out. I don't know. We'll see. I have, I have a forerunner with, like, me and my boyfriend, and he built, um, like, these drawers, these storage drawers, and then we built it out with turf on top that, like, actually folds out into a twin bed, which is so rad. I can always see my car um it's kind of that was kind of why we did it like if I ever did a road trip or something to a tournament like I could actually sleep in my car I could actually do it and be very comfortable um so it's all these funny things that you joke about and then it gets to May and you finish season you're like well I might actually be sleeping in my car a little bit this summer. We'll, see. <laughs> we'll see but um yeah so have the lease I'll probably be bouncing back and forth I love San Diego this is home for me I, I want to be here um in the future and um, I have a boyfriend here. My family's here. I got a puppy during quarantine. She's here, oh, nice. she's sitting right next to me. Um, but I, I love LA and that's kind of where you need to be if you want to play. So um, I'll definitely be back and forth for the next little bit. Um, but once, if there's a, more of a schedule um, and I kind of get into a, a rhythm with training groups, then I'll be up there much more consistently for sure. That's kind of, that's kind of the plan. Um, day by day, week by week thing. Um, that's that's got to just how it has to be right now which is fine and I'm I'm normally a planner yeah. but I've had to just let all that go and um trust the process and continue to talk to people like you guys and and Sarah and Zana um I had my friend Rachel I had lunch with her I had her text Fallon uh so I'm gonna shoot Fallon a text just any connections I have for anything and everyone like I said has been so helpful and so nice and yeah ready to get after it and we'll see how it goes. It's a little scary, but it's much more exciting than it is scary. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's good that you're taking some time to decompress because now, I mean, I think once tournaments start happening, like once you go to New Orleans, I think what you'll find is that you, there's always going to be stuff to play and you're pretty much going to be going, going, going to like uh, probably October-ish. And then, yeah. which for you will be like February, you guys started practicing and playing for UCLA, right? So that's a long year. Yeah, I, I haven't had, a and this, you know, I had COVID, which was the best break I ever had. But even then I was going to, I was training a bunch. Um, 
I've never had an off season ever because I did, I did both. So, um, until October, November, whenever it is like, I, that's my off season. It's not right now. Like we're just getting into season. And so as much as I wanted to like take a little break, um, I'm still in my, the best shape I could be in. So I got to like stick with it and carry that on through the summer. Cause I don't know how often I'm going to be able to get into a gym. I really don't know how often I'm going to be able to lift. I crushed it in the weight room, uh, all season. That was something I really prioritized was my weightlifting and hopefully I can use that. And I can still obviously go do a bunch of body weight stuff and being in the sand is the best workout you can have. It's the best thing you can do. Yeah. Um, but I need to just keep getting after it and carry that over because that's a big advantage. Like you said, going into these early tournaments, being in this good of shape and having that experience playing in tournaments. Um, so that's super important for me. Take a couple of days off. My body feels great. It's more for the mind, a couple of days off for the mind and then, um, and then go get after it. The beach is great on my body. I mean, you know, I have things here and there, but compared to indoor season, I'm like, I was, I'm tired for sure, but my body itself feels pretty, pretty dang good after being in season for a while, which is the beauty of playing in the sand, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I feel like indoor or like grass just makes everything hurt. The oh, beach, yeah. beach just makes you more fatigued. Yeah. And you give it a couple of days and, and you're like ready to rock again. Yeah. Oh yeah. You just want to sleep. You're sunburned. You're exhausted. You want to <laughs> sleep for a bit, but like my body, I mean, when we played in the finals, I was kind of, I was gassed. I was gassing um, for sure. Playing those extra games in the heat. Yeah. We, we don't play in that heat all the time. Um, but fit, you know, I felt healthy. I felt good. My shoulders are good. My back's good. Like my body feels good. I was just super tired. Um, I couldn't admit to it then. I can admit to it now. Like we were all cooked. We were like, oh my gosh, like, None of us, we all weren't going to talk about it. Like saying we were tired was not a thing. We weren't going to talk about it. We, yeah. we wanted to think, you know, we obviously, there's always, always more in the tank, but we were absolutely gassed, absolutely gassed. That's just, you know, in the heat and playing those extra games against really good teams, that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, that, that. Yeah. In, in the best shape I can be in. So um, that's the beauty of being going back for a fifth year. That was another reason I wanted to go back is getting the, Great, great training, training from Stein and Jenny and from our strength coach who just totally whipped us in the shape. Um, that's a big advantage for me, for sure. For all of us who are just coming out of season, as long as you don't sit on the couch for the next month, we'll all be in, we'll all be in good shape. <laughs> yeah. I bet you guys, I bet you guys looked like you're in a lot better shape than me and Trevor in our, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're peeling each other off the ground. <laughs> Flash, I was. I still, days. Trevor just laying down at the eighteen seventeen switch is one of my favorites. <laughs> no, the best the the picture that I want, like if I ever have like a bar in my house one day, is Trevor going to the coin toss. It's like from my point of view, it was so good, and he just walks up and goes to his knees, and he waits for the coin toss from his knees and does the whole thing. And Jake walks up. He's standing there, the ref's standing, and Trevor's just on his knees. <laughs> I was like, good, good. Be efficient. Perfect. 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 <laughs> Dude, I would have loved to have seen, like, an ESPN odds maker. Like, what percent you percentage chance you guys had to win that? Because it, it was not high to win that third set. <laughs> you guys pulled it out, though. It was crazy. It was awesome. So rad. So rad. <laughs> Well, Sav, good to uh, good to chat with you again. Glad to have you back, and uh, we will have you in person again uh, as soon as we can. I'm about to leave. I leave for um, like a month overseas, starting on Friday. Um, so by the time this comes out, I'll be in Bulgaria. And try, we got our visas for Russia, so I'll see I'll you there. In yeah, dude, Adam should Adam is the next president of the United States. <laughs> he just pulled off to get these visas and a new passport. You get a new passport in one day. It takes like two months to get those things. And Adam was like, yeah, yeah I made a couple calls and I texted people and uh, here's my passport. It's <laughs> like, you're a wizard. <laughs> so yeah, so I'll see you in Sochi, man. Heck yeah. Um, Good luck, you guys. I'm excited to watch. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. And uh, Sav, I think I'll probably be coming back to new orleans after russia so i'll probably be there yay and then yeah i would i can't wait to 
hopefully be in person whenever you guys are back and, and willing to have me. I would love to actually get after in person. That's what I've always wanted to do. Um, so obviously thankful for our, our zoom calls, but I'm excited to get after in person. It'll be fun. Yeah. We'll see if we can get you some, some podcast money to help pay for that rent up in the South Bay. We got to get you up here. I got to get up there at some point. <laughs> I don't know if I can fund it right now, but yeah. Thank you guys for having me as always. That was so fun and always so easy just to, for me to just ramble on and talk about my life. So appreciate <laughs> you guys giving me the space to do that. It's awesome. Perfect. Well, Sav, congrats on a, a heck of a run at UCLA and uh, congrats on a great season. I know it didn't end with the last match the way you wanted, but Pac-12 championship, going to the NCAA finals. That's um, pretty impressive. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that more than you know. It means so much. Thank you again. Congrats. Thanks for coming on, Sav. Shoot. All right. See, See you soon. guys. All right.